Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Snetis where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our playlist called Ever Wonder Why? Have you ever wondered why pneumonia or any other supra diaphragmatic disease can actually cause pain down there in the abdomen? What? Today you will understand why. A wise person once said the two most important days in one's life is one, the day we were born, and two, the day we discovered why. This is my Ever Wonder Why playlist. We had previous videos like why is Nagma hyperchloremic? Why is Hagma normal chloremic? Hagma is high anion gap metabolic acidosis. Nagma is normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. Why does the pain of duodenal ulcer improve when you eat? Whereas the pain of gastric ulcer gets worse as you eat. Why does multiple myeloma have a low anion gap? Why does lambert eaton myasthenic syndrome have autonomic symptoms, but myasthenia gravis does not have any autonomic symptoms? And why do patients with tetralogy of Fallot squat? Or why do they get into that knee chest position? All right, so why does pneumonia cause abdominal pain? The answer is in anatomy. So let's go back to square one. Here is a cross section in your thorax. Here is anterior, here is posterior, here is the right side, here is the left side. This is your wonderful right lung and this is the left lung. As you know, around the lung there is the pleura, visceral pleura and then parietal pleura. After this, you have the chest wall or the rib cage, which has ribs. What's between the ribs? We have muscles, like the external intercostal, internal intercostal. Between these two layers of muscle, we have the famous fancy intercostal nerve. This is true from the first thoracic vertebra all the way down until the 12th thoracic vertebra. You have thoracic nerves. This nerve will give some fibers to the parietal pleura as well as lateral cutaneous and anterior cutaneous branches for the skin, laterally and anteriorly. Now, can you imagine a lung disease affecting the pleura and therefore coming in the vicinity of the thoracic nerve? Of course it's possible. But what does that have to do with the abdomen? Well, 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 let's continue forwards because it's called a dermatome. Each level is called a dermatome. Tome means to cut, derma means skin. So let's follow that. The skin here is supplied by T1 nerve and then T2, T3, T4, very important. It's at the level of the nipples. T5, T6, T7, T8, T9, T10 is an important landmark because it's at the level of the umbilicus. So at the nipple, T4, umbilicus T10, then T11, 12, etc. So let's take T7, for example. T7 comes in close proximity to the pleura. It's also supplying skin in the anterior abdominal wall. So I can have an ammonia or lung abscess, or empyema, or pleurisy, etc., etc., and the pain will refer to the anterior abdominal wall. So don't be a doofus doctor. When a patient comes to you complaining of pain here, yes, it's important to think of abdominal causes. However, in your deferential, you should also include thoracic causes, supradiaphragmatic causes, of this infradiaphragmatic pain. That's why the history is so important. To illustrate the utility of the aggravating and alleviating factors, consider two patients with left-sided anterior chest pain. One patient's pain is induced by exercise and strong emotions, but consistently relieved by rest and sublingual nitroglycerin. This is characteristic of angina pectoris. The other patient's pain is aggravated by sneezing, coughing, and respiration, but alleviated by shallow breathing and splinting of the left side of the chest. This patient has pleurisy. Can this pain of pleurisy be felt in the skin of the anterior abdominal wall? The answer is yes. It's called referred pain. For that same reason, gallbladder problems can be felt as pain in the right shoulder because both of them converge onto C5. And the brain and spinal cord are confused. They have no idea if the pain is coming from the shoulder or if the pain is coming from the gallbladder. So they will project it forwards to both sides. So you can feel the pain here and here. Some patients might feel this more, others might feel this more. 
Some patients might feel both. Cause remember the two layers of the pleura. Outer layer receives somatic fibers. The inner layer receives autonomic, visceral, sympathetic fibers. So the outer layer of the pleura, the parietal pleura, is very sensitive to pain, stretch, touch, temperature, pressure, etc. But the inner layer of the pleura is only visceral, only sensitive to stretch. Visceral pain is vague and is poorly localized compared to somatic pain. That's why in cases of appendicitis, in the beginning it's periumbilical and vague because it's still visceral. As your appendix grows and grows and grows and grows and the inflammation gets worse and worse and worse, you'll start hitting somatic fibers. Then it will be well localized at the McBurney's point. Why does the pain of myocardial infarction radiate to the left arm? Because both are supplied by T1 thoracic segment. Why does the pain in the kidney or ureter radiate to the groin? Well, both are supplied by the same lumbar segment. Why does my patient who has a pleural fistula feel the pain down here? Because both are supplied by T8 thoracic segment. See, medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. When two points in your body converge on the same spinal segment, you will project the pain forwards to both points. And that's the basic idea behind referred pain. Now you know why pneumonia or pleural effusion or lung abscess or pleural fistulas can cause pain in the anterior abdominal wall. It all makes sense now. If you want to be a great student, go review the basic anatomy of the thorax just after watching this video. And there are many other cool videos on this playlist. So Medicosis says, quote, many a lesion located supradiaphragmatically can be projected infradiaphragmatically. If you want to take it to the next level, download my surgery high yields course on my website. It comes with videos, notes, cases, and my favorite, Medicosis Couch Potato segment, where I'll present a hundred different patients to you, and your job is to tell me what's the most likely condition, how can you diagnose them, how can you manage them. I also have an emergency medicine high yields course which includes toxicology topics. We also talk about ARDS and the PAO2 to FIO2 ratio. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis where medicine makes perfect sense.